This is pilot interview one, carried out in 2001 as part of my dissertation for a master's degree in nursing. I use an ethnographic approach to study a culture of an orthopedic ward and how that culture influences the perceptions and care and behaviours of staff and nurses. A research string was done as part of the process. We presented with um, a proposal as well that had to be completed. Um, a talk was given as well to members of staff outlining the study and the purpose and the vision for the future with the rising numbers of elderly people going hip surgery. Um, so we have this um, interview first, and um, this was carried out on the ward. No, actually, no. This was carried out in the in um, the um, post grad centre. Sometimes it happened off the ward, but within the hospital. Um, sometimes it happened in, in people's homes. It was an informal interview approach. Um, an analysis of themes and um, things like that which would be taken from the interview after transcription. Um, all this is explained in the research string that I've done, outlining methods, evidence and all this sort of thing. And there was a great deal of um, literature research carried out as well to support this um, study. Also informed consent from the participants. Um, so it's basically it's an informal interview. This is going to be the first pilot interview that I carried out. Um, like I said, I did provide people with a, an outline of the study, provided them with information about ethnography and further reading as well if they wanted to um, have a look at what eth ethnography is and how it's used to help. It's a, qu a qualitative approach um, I use as opposed to a lot of uh, uh, medical models that are used with controlled trials and all this sort of thing. Um, this is a, a quite a relaxed interview, informal interview. I participated as well and um, so here we go. Oh. Right then, you can start. So I don't want to put anything in your mind, so um, basically, um, do you want to tell me a story about how you feel about the problem of confusion and the orthopedic setting that you work in? And you can do anything you like in that, you know, your role in it, you know, um, look at the culture of the ward as well, and all the different things that go on that influence the care of that person who might not necessarily be confused in the beginning. Well, I'm a newly qualified staff nurse, um, staff in team months on sleep on ward. So I've had a new insight into the problem of confusion, which is one of the most common problems on an orthopedic ward that I've come across so far. And I'd say at least about of the elderly that do come in will suffer with some form of confusion, whether it's due to a, uh, another problem whilst they're on sleep home. Um, mainly the problems you'll find is people's misunderstanding of the elderly and um, of the elderly. And, um, and that's good, yeah, yeah, that has been identified globally as well. Uh -huh. Uh, mainly it's a fact to do with people not understanding the, the reasons and the problems and the causes of confusion in the elderly. Yeah. Mainly with the illnesses of dementia and Alzheimer's that you see on the ward as well, um, which are underlying underneath their orthopaedic problems. And um, basically the medication that may go alongside it, um, overuse of opiate-based drugs like tramadol and coproximal, which tend to send the elderly off into a confused state. 
and this is not recognised by the doctors who then continue to prescribe and then it's the nurse's role to identify the problems and, and maybe stop the drugs being given. Right, yeah. Um, do you see confusion? Um, can you identify confusion as opposed to say dementia or anything? I'm sure. Yeah, it, on admission um, a particular person may be uh, sound of mind, being able to converse with you, answer questions, um, tell you what time of day it is, etc. Um, it could be after a day or so that they just all of a sudden have erratic behaviour um, and seem like they've they've lose, lost control in some kind of way and and unorientated. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, because demented people get more confused sometimes, oh. don't they? They yeah. still get confused, and when they get confused, it, it, it enhances their dementia. I find. Um, so how so how do you think? Possibly, like the you know, you're, as a nurse, you could. Um, what, what do you see as well as sort of improving that? I think it's a multidisciplinary team effort to to address these problems, um, and also there are underlying problems such as dehydration. When you're on a surgical ward, you are going to be starving these elderly people who may have come in with um, dehydration anyway through maybe <coughs> the that they're at home and they're not caring for themselves anyway. So when they come in and you start on them, you're adding to the problem that's already there. Yeah. So it's an understanding um, and implementation of adequate care to ensure things like dehydration are not contributory towards the confused, yeah. confused state. Um, and it's just a basic understanding of how to treat these people um, and to, to just be a bit more sympathetic yeah. and look at a holistic way that you can treat these people right. as opposed to... That's right, yeah. Yeah, that's brilliant, yeah. Um, a holistic way. So, how do you feel an orthopaedic setting um, manifests this holistic approach? It's not an ideal environment, purely because it's surgical, purely because you've got it's such an acute setting. Um, realistically, the the point is such a short staffed anyway um, don't help the situation. As in, um, don't help the situation. As in that we haven't got the time to really recognise the problems. And, and if you think at least 80% of our um, patients on the ward are of an elderly age, you yeah. haven't got the time to appropriately go around and assess on a busy day shift when you've got the doctor's rounds, medication rounds, relatives, etc. Yeah. And that you haven't really got the time to go and properly assess. So it's a staffing problem as such as well. If they were more staff, we could implement a little bit more yeah. um, care towards them. Right, so you're talking about assessment. Do you think perhaps in a, a confusion assessment, um, you know, like on admission before they come in, like some sort of assessment would be? Yeah. Like nurses, for nurses to do, I mean, sort of yeah, type yeah. Of some sort of assessment. Yeah, that may be an idea. Um, and also, basically just um, perhaps a ward year analysis on admission as well, to check they haven't got a UTI, which was, which was confusion or some form of infection. Yeah. Um, so you just need to pinpoint and identify different areas to why or how they could be confused. Yeah. Whether or not it's just, um, as you say, dehydration, infection, yeah. or medications, so all these other factors need to be looked at. Yeah, so do you think like nurses need a bit more training and education in, uh -huh. in, in, in identifying confusion and looking at all the predisposing factors maybe? Yeah, I, mean, I think there should be some form of kind of a core care plan that you can look into. Um, which could highlight medication, um, some form of infection, or just the environment. Um, so then, you, as a nurse, you could go and look at this core care plan, and it could identify ways that you could go about and how to alleviate the patient's um, problems yeah. at the hospital. Um, and also for the doctors as well to do an adequate assessment. Yeah. Um, and again, yeah. it's just re-educating people, because people can get a bit blasé as time goes on, that's as all right. our patients can feel yeah. so well. Yeah. yeah. That's it. Yeah. And, and you... What about, you know, people's attitudes sometimes, you know, oh, that's, you, you often sometimes hear things, don't you, like, um, oh, they're off their yeah. rocker, or, she's mad, or, you know, <laughs> yeah. um, so, from that point of view, working in a, in a <coughs> busy orthopedic environment. It's not like you set it, I don't think. No. It's all the pre-op and post-op, um. Yeah. Do you think you, it could be made a, a better setting then? Definitely, yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Again, I think it's just a staffing issue at the moment that we're so yeah. short staff that you're unable to really go around and assess assess a problem. Um, obviously, you can identify somebody who has become um, confused, um, 
can then appropriately go about to try to find out a reason why. But some yeah. some nurses are, as I said, as time goes on, a bit blasé about it. Um, but I think it's I say a call care plan may be implemented or may be handy yeah. for people to relate back to, so that the nurses can then go on and um, and treat appropriately. Yeah. But as I said, with the surgical side of things, um, just the main problem of keeping old fat people or elderly with fractured necks and femur. No, oh. mouth for hours and hours and hours, and then they're cancelled. Um, and yeah. then they know by mouth the following day. Right. They've had, you know, 24 hours of hardly any nutrition or any fluids. Yeah. Which, before they even got a theatre, can be confused. That's right, and they're hospitalised in a strange they environment. Yeah. Removed from family and yeah, exactly. familiar things, that sort of thing. It's very institutionalised, very routine <coughs> orientated, which may not come into their normal routine at home of uh, yeah. getting up at the early hours, the t- times of the meals, um, and that kind of thing. Yeah, and sort of like. Um, if you look at the care of the orthopedic patient, then um, they're, sort of, they're sort of certain priorities that people give, don't they, sometimes, mm, yeah. to get their care. Yeah. Um, and would you say sort of confusion wasn't one of their main priorities? It, 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 when people come in and say, even for an elective surgery, they yeah. sometimes yeah, get confused, don't they? Yeah, definitely. Um, On top of that, then, you have the anaesthetic, which can send elderly people confused afterwards, temporarily. And that yeah. may be because pre-op they were kept near their mouth for such long lengths of time. So, yeah, so it's, it's a lot of physical, chemical causes. Yeah, as, as, as well, well as, as psycho um, causes as well. But yeah. So, you know, what, what, you know, like, yeah, apart from like having an assessment program or something like that, you know, we could um, affect changes on the ward to to get to deal better with this problem. Things about re-education, maybe pinpointing a particular nurse who may be the link nurse, um, such as yourself, who's actually studying a particular area, people mm-hmm. can go and relate to and come back and get feedback on how to treat a particular person, um, yeah. what areas need to be defined more, um, how you'll be able to treat an individual, and um, basically where to take it from the identification they are confused, where to go from there, and communication with the doctors as well. Yeah. Um, adequate communication so do you feel you can go and talk to them and say this person wasn't confused on admission they've suddenly become confused um, can you look at the particular areas go through the medication the drug charts um, and that kind of thing but maybe a link list would be ideal for somebody to come and yeah, meet yeah you've got other nurses yeah pain control diabetic link um, IV link yeah. list etc because somebody mm-hmm. who's educated who could be able to pass on and maybe hold in just um so on an afternoon, just getting a, a group of people together to discuss confusion, mm-hmm. and, and that way, right, start passing on information, yeah. sharing thoughts and feelings. Yeah, reflective practice, which goes yeah. to prep anyway, but also benefits more um, patient care. That's right. So I mean, what do you find it frustrating about dealing with the confused? I find frustrating that members of staff will um, not totally empathise with the patient, and to take what they say in their confused state to heart and then shout back because I think mm. then that causes even more problems for them. Yeah. And I don't think it's something that they can help. And a lot of the mm. confused patients, if they knew how they were acting, would be devastated in their normal sane mind. Yeah. Um, and that is where I find it upsetting that some members of staff will shout back at particular patients, whether it's mm. dementia or Alzheimer's yeah. or um, somebody who's got a urine infection, which is quite common as well in hospitals. Yeah. Um, so that's my most frustrating thing also. Because they can be seen as demanding, yeah. um, even just taking up a lot of your behaviour, I mean, when they're and pulling their tubes out and climbing over the cot sure. side mm-hmm. and shouting in the middle of the night or even in the day. And maybe just to take, in, you know, just individuals aside and re-educate them on how to deal with the confused. Yeah. And yeah. the most effective way is just to calm them down by just talking normally, mm. um, in a non-threatening voice. Yeah, because like you said, and time reassuring. and staffing yeah, is a problem. problem. And with the added stresses of running a ward anyway that most staff is. Yeah, yeah, pulling your hair out. Right. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And doctors yeah. and all sorts of the multiple disciplinary team around the ward are wanting your attention and wanting your opinion all the time. And then to go to somebody who may be a bit challenging, it's quite easy to lose your cool, but then it does take a lot yeah. to calm yourself down and address that particular problem as a... Mm. As a, an individual problem and not that they're yeah. deliberately getting at you. So, re education, right. I think, is the key to. Um, yeah. Because we've all got our ideals about holistic care and, and yeah, this yeah. thing, this person thing. Definitely. You know, it's all um, about professional practice as well, and I think it can be um, unprofessional when you hear another member of. 
yeah. interacting at a patient. Yeah. Um, it's quite um, distressing. That's right. I mean, if you think about it, there's um, we've got a, 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 quite a skill mix on the ward. We have, yes. So we've got like bank nurses coming on, we've got quite a few NAs and healthcare assistants who are doing their MVQ. Uh, and so we'll be picking up, you know, different uh, areas when you're um, trying to deliver care to a patient. Um, and of course there's a lot of emphasis in that, you know, on wound care and yeah. pressure care is very important. And and so to confuse, that doesn't always take a quite a priority no. that I've identified, no. but um, that's worldwide, yeah. that problem. It's um, the extended role of the nurse. The nurse's role is more going towards kind of clinical skills and managing yeah. their skills. Yeah. And even as a newly qualified at myself and finding uh, on a shift I'll be so busy caught up in the managerial side of things and the clinical side of things. They don't always get a chance to be on yeah. the floor to identify this problem, yeah. which is where your untrained staff are vital. That you need to communicate with them also and they also need educating. Yeah. But my overall experience with the untrained staff is very positive, is in that they can identify a problem and will relate it back to the staff nurse. Yeah. Um, who as long as it is educated as well in the confusion state can go and act appropriately then that's right so in, implementing adequate care for individuals yeah. so the type of active plan would be used yeah wouldn't a, it? a strategy then, needs to be um, identified yeah. and organised kind of that's right like yeah. pain control yeah. like I identified yeah. earlier um, now what about sort of the organisation of like the ward overall with you know how orthopaedics is, is, is directed, if you like, because you've got this elective and this trauma side, yeah. and you've got this drive, haven't you, to get people through, yeah. you know, all the time. I mean, people are no, no doubt they are not being um, kept on the ward long enough as they should. But that is, again, pressures managerial wise on, on beds and relieving beds for, for other admissions. That's right. You've yeah. got your elective list to try and get in. So yeah. Again, you're weighting this down, again, going towards statistics for people to say, well, this hospital is catering. Adequately towards right. um, getting operations implemented and sorted out. So maybe that needs to look into as well. Is that yeah. appropriate? So it's, 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 not, it's, it's outside the arena of the nurse yeah. sometimes. It's like yeah. other things influencing. It's like extrinsic factors as well. Yeah. Um, but there's a lot of pressure on, on the staff nurse. And like, it could be that I've had experiences where I'm on a shift. Um, I'd say 80% of my time I am there on my own. I'm on a shift. Yeah. And in the morning, that could re relate to two ward rounds with consultants, which then takes up your time going around to see your patients. That may be an ideal um, place then to, to kind of bring this up to the consultant and see how what they, their views are yeah. on a particular yeah. problem. Um, but then after the ward rounds, that takes your time then documenting what they've said because documentation is very important. Yeah. That's another pressure that we have. Um, and basically, that you can't be everywhere at the same time. No, that's right. I mean, that's, like I say, documentation is important, not because it's like a legal document, but it commun it's a communication, so, to, you know, we can all follow on, I suppose. I mean, like I say, time again, yeah. if you've got time to write all this down sometimes. Um, so, in, relation to the, in regards to the trauma side, it's where you usually find that due to the sheer trauma that these people have gone through to actually break uh, particular bones, especially with the neck of femurs, yeah. But the trauma within itself, and as you say, being brought into an unfamiliar environment yeah. uh, with different staff members, uh, maybe not the continuation of nursing care that the named nurse was supposedly to bring in. Yeah, yeah. But it can cause confusion there, just with the sheer trauma of it all. That's right, yeah. Um, and again, you added, added um, factors of dehydration and inappropriate yeah. um, anesthesia. May you send them off. That's right, and yeah. It's a confused state. Yeah. Which may only be temporary, but can be sorted out if you've got the knowledge behind you to be able yeah. to identify which is, right. you know, why this patient has become slightly confused. But yeah. And uh, do you get, get a strategy, is it? So that get a core care plan yeah. you can identify. Um, and a shared philosophy, maybe, yeah. so that this has got this condition, sure. but we're not going to treat them like a child, maybe. That's sure. things I've discovered. Yeah, you know, we've got funny views, haven't they, sometimes on elderly people. Do you find that? Yeah, I think overall the society has anyway, isn't it? Oh, age of society. Definitely, yeah. yeah. And it's like yeah. people say they go back to their childhood when they're elderly, which is after that people will address them as if they are children. 
and instead of calling them by their last name, which is maybe a mark of respect, which they've always been called by, they yeah. start using unfamiliar names, love, sweetheart. Oh, yeah, we all do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, come on, lovey. Yeah. 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 <coughs> yeah, excuse me. Um, but that kind of thing as well. It's an overall um, area to address elderly people as a whole in society mm. and not kind of ruin them as, as maybe um, an inconvenience. Yeah, that's right. A lot of attitudes have shown. Yeah. Now, look, what about some of the surgery? You know, um, mm. that is carried out on some patients. You know, they're mm. about, say, they're 95. Sure, sure. And they have been living quite happily at home. They're orientated. Yeah. And then, you know, this major attack on them, in a way, yeah. in inverted commas. Sure, sure. Um, and then everybody around them making decisions on whether they should go back home. I think it's loss of control with the elderly as well, that as soon as they come in, and it, this goes for a lot of people, as soon as they come into the hospital environment, that they they feel like they've lost their control, but yeah. they naturally take over their every holistic need. Yeah. And maybe they feel their lack of control can contribute to their confusion, as in that they've got no routine anymore, they don't yeah. get up at a particular time that they're used to at home, they don't eat it. They're the bad, everything's time. upset. Yeah. Exactly. All those personal aspects of, yeah. of their All ordinary the aspects, living. Yeah. 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 Yeah, that's okay. Um